There you go. You did it. Good job. You want to do that one too? Okay, now you continue. Okay? Let me help you. Okay? Keep doing it. Good job. Is I doing good? You want to put that one too? Okay. All right. I like this one too. Do you need that too? You can do it by yourself. There you go. You can take some out from here. There you go. See? You want the big one? See, look. Yeah. Look, it's a big one. It's a big one. There you go. Yeah. Can I put something You got blue. You have the small one? See, look, I have a big one. You want to try orange leaves? Try. You need help. Zaya? Really? You need help. You want to put it on the blue here? Which color do you want to put it on? The blue color? Okay, look at me. Yeah, look at the texture. Okay, what's next? Bumpy, right? So it has some glitter on it. Color too? Okay. Is this shiny too? Yeah. You can put it beside your other one. How about the Myra doing? You're making me have all three. Yeah, there's lots of blue, right? Can I put some blue? Make one for this one too. Okay. Thank you. Wow. After that? What color is that? Me? Another color I want. Oh, do you know your color? Mm -hmm. What color yeah, is that? Yeah, you like the clear of these. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What color did you put here? Oh, and what color did you put this one? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to put this one here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, take the brown one. Oh, yeah. Is that for mommy or daddy? Okay, so where are you going to put you're making it for mommy or daddy? Mommy, oh, sorry. Mommy gonna love it. There you go. If you want, you can make one too, Sudan, okay? I'll leave it for you here too. Please tell and then you can make it. It's okay, Miss Wadi. Right? Yeah, you can do it. Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, okay. What does it have? Would I have learned? Look, so they have the same color here. Water? 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 So it's the one for the pink one, the pink one, and the yellow one. Which one is your favorite? Oh, huh? One more green one. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Good job. Yes, you're doing good job. You want more glitter? Right? What's next? Here. What color next? See, look. Uh, yes. There's another one. You want this color? Okay. Oh, but that's a nice color too. Yeah, Josiah, you look so shiny, right? Josiah, look, let's make one for the time. It's okay, then you can move to our way. So you look, you choose it. There you go. Now you can put more, right? Put them more. You want to put this one? Hi, guys. Hi. Oh, it's beautiful. Fall art. Much appreciate that. I'm going to count these right here. This gentleman is there. You know, the third one. How are you guys? How are you guys? How are you guys? How are you guys? How are I'm curious to know if you know. Are you going to, what are you going to do with it when you're done? Do you know? Are you going to decorate your classroom or are you going to take it home? Do you want to take it home? Yeah, give it to your, are you going to do it home? Thank you. Yeah, it's a good one. Let's find some more. You want more glitter or you want the plain one? 
Uh, All right. Okay. Oh, they're going to exit? Okay. It's really oh, pretty. Pretty. Just start off. Like, fun, just fun to be like, okay, yeah, how are you going to take it on it? Right. I'm like, oh, how much <laughs> effort did you put into this, honey? Yeah. Oh. You know, I'm not into the face, <laughs> like. <laughs> I was like, seriously, this is what you do on the Mother's Day? Thank you, thank you. You know, my husband stopped like buying gifts. He's like, oh, you know, the now the that he's, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I see you, Miss Rodney. Yeah. Okay. I want my money back. No. Oh my God, gosh. With pencil. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here today on this. Thursday afternoon. It is my pleasure to be here with quite a, quite a group. We've got <laughs> Minister Lecce, Minister Williams, MP Chefcott Ali, MP Sonia Sadu, MP Rudy, Ruby Shahota, Shahota? Sahota. 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 <laughs> and Manindir Sadu. Child care centers around the wonderful spaces to explore and learn about the world. And so I just want to thank Busy Bee Child Care Center here in, in Brampton and their staff for hosting us today. And for many children, spaces such as these are valuable spaces that start them out on their path towards lifelong achievement and success. And that is why I'm excited to be a part of a team that is getting it done to support working families and increase access to more affordable, high-quality childcare options by creating thousands of new childcare spaces by the end of 2026. Today, we are announcing a comprehensive childcare workforce strategy, a first of its kind in Ontario, to support the recruitment and retention of talented educators in this valued profession. Registered child care educators, or RCEs, reform a critical function in the lives of Ontario children, in their learning, in their development, and in setting students up for success. Our strategy focuses on meeting RECE child workforce demands and a plan to help Ontario's children and families find quality child care more affordable and accessible. Informed by extensive consultation with our sector and partners, and I will give a shout out to uh, our as assist Associate Deputy Min 
minister <laughs> with all the work that she did for us. And we have come up with the child care workforce star duty that includes five pillars. And I'd like to talk about each pillar a little bit more in detail, starting with wages and working condi conditions. Wage enhancement and better working conditions are essential, and our plan will benefit an estimated 75% of the RECE program staff. In 2022, we introduced a wage for floor for eligible RECEs that provide an annual increase until the end of the Seawalk Agreement. Starting in 2024, wage enhancement under the Seawalk Agreement will see RECEs working in childcare settings enrolled in the Seawalk program that have a new wage floor of $23.84 per hour, up from the planned $20 an hour. And this will increase to $25.86 by 2026. We're so happy to get this across the finish line. This will close the gap and align starting salaries for RECEs in licensed childcare with those in our school boards. We will be also increasing the existing dollar an hour increase by expanding the eligibility threshold from those earning less than $25 an hour to those earning less than $26 an hour in the next year, less than $27 an hour in 2025, and less than $28 per hour in 2026. This will help to retain existing RECEs by providing them growth and salary progression opportunities. Furthermore, to improve working conditions in the profession, we'll be funding up to one paid profet development day for RECEs and other program staff beginning in 2024. The funding could be used for either professional mental health or resilience training that will give educators the support they need. The second part of the strategy I'd like to focus on is how we're expanding entry into the profession and supporting career advancement. We're supporting the expansion of the dual credit program in secondary schools and working with school boards on dual credit programs to increase attraction and exposure for high school students to the profession. We're also supporting more workers who already have experience. If you have six months of experience in the sector, you may be eligible to receive financial support to obtain an ECE diploma and register with the college through an enhanced funding of the ECE Qualifications Upgrade Program. We're launching a one-time innovation fund to support regional planning tables and partnerships to develop local solutions to workforce issues, including improving working conditions and support for students. And we'll be helping more students get qualified faster by regulatory changes to allow students to complete their placement at their place of work if they're already working in a licensed childcare. And we'll be working with other partners to support career laddering opportunities for RECEs. Our third pillar reduces administrative burden and provides em employers with greater flexibility in staffing their childcare programs. We'll do this by extending the current flexibility employers have to leverage the skills of a broader range of workers from the 9 to 12 year old group, such as using teachers or childcare workers in the 6 to 9 age group. All safety and quality standards will remain. Our fourth pillar, we're looking at initiatives such as promotional ca campaigns that will build on the profile of our ECEs. We are also establishing and leading a national working group on interprovincial territorial mobility and foreign credential recognition for our ECEs that will help ensure seamless movement of qualified workers across Canada and from around the world. And we'll continue to align efforts with federal programs to improve recruitment and retention. Lastly, we're implementing a framework to track and measure key indicators of the strategy to ensure initiatives are successful and at, are addressing the sector needs. Our plan will position Ontario as a leading jurisdiction for early childcare educators. This childcare workforce strategy will help address existing workforce shortages in the childcare sector and provide a more affordable, accessible childcare to families. Please join me as I welcome Minister, the Honourable Stephen Letcher, the Ontario Minister of Education. Okay.
Uh, thank you very much. It's uh, an honor to be back at the Busy Bee. I want to give a shout out to Mubash and Ashima, who have been wonderful hosts, very kind, hardworking leaders in the childcare sector here in Brampton. I was just here not long ago with Minister Williams as we announced the very first checks that we cut, a 50% reduction we achieved together, all governments working together to support families. Some of the parents are here today, so it's full circle to be back to support what you do and we thank you we thank the workers the ECEs especially today who are the driving force of your success so thank you to everyone for your welcome <laughs> so um, first off uh, let me just um, thank uh, my federal colleagues who are with us today thank you all uh, uh, shout out to Minister Williams uh, MPP Charmaine Williams in her community in her riding here in Brampton Centre and a special sense of gratitude to the parliamentary assistant, uh, Patrice Barnes, who made this announcement today for her leadership, true leadership, her excellence, her relentless nature to get this to the finish line today. This is very good for families, for operators, and frankly, for our economy. So thank you, Patrice, for your exceptional leadership in Ontario. And so before we talk about that very important announcement, I did want to speak about another uh, action the government is taking, um, which I know is so important to so many families. Many of us um, have witnessed the heartbreaking tragedy of the loss of children um, in Ontario and the country. And we have a responsibility and an obligation as governments to enhance the safety of our youngest learners, to prevent these tragedies from taking place again. Because if we can save even one life of a child and prevent the suffering of their parents, then we must act. And so following strong advocacy of my parliamentary colleagues, uh, Brian Riddell and Lauren Coe, um, as well as Patrice Barnes and Sherman Williams, our government today is taking action to strengthen safety and well-being of children who are in licensed childcare settings. And starting this January of 2024, we will require that all licensed childcare programs will be uh, implementing a safe arrival and dismissal policy designed to prevent these heartbreaking tragedies and to ultimately save lives. And this will ensure that we that when a child does not arrive at a licensed child care program or is not picked up as expected, the parents will be um, informed in line with the exact same safe arrival and dismissal policy that exists within our schools for similar age children. We think it was fundamental to close that gap uh, and to work together to support the most exceptional, most vulnerable kids among us. Now we're also here, in addition to keeping children safe, we're, we're here to ensure we could shore up this childcare sector, support our workers, expand the spaces, continue on our plan to keep cutting fees for families in this province. And we know with the great challenges of affordability, this is a monumental step forward, a 50% reduction. We're talking about anywhere between eight and $12,000, be it in Brampton and Vaughan, in small and large communities in this province, families are saving money in the bank. And that is a huge achievement for which our Premier and government is committed to keep doing until we get down to $10 a day by year 2026. Now, today, we're also bringing forth a strategy, a comprehensive strategy to ensure we meet the needs of growth within the province. And that's ensuring families have childcare that suits their needs is vital to the child development and the growth of our economy. Enabling more parents, and particularly women, as Minister Williams will often remind me, enabling more women in the economy is a good thing for our country, for our democracy and society, and this is part of our plan to do just that. And so ensuring families have access to these incredible early childhood educators who make a tremendous impact in the life of children uh, is important. And that's why we're here to unveil partnership with all levels of government, a multi-pronged strategy to recruit and to retain these wonderful uh, workers within our schools and within our child care settings. By hiring more ECEs, our government will continue on our mission and our plan to keep reducing fees and increasing access to affordable child care. As the parliamentary assistant, as Patrice just announced, there's five fundamental pillars. And the first, starting in January of 2024, is a significant increase in wages. We're talking about a lift in the first year of nearly of 19%, which will continue to go up each and every year until 2026. That ends the disparity that existed between our ECs within our schools and the ECs within our childcare centers. This is important as we achieve wage parity between the two settings, um, really ensuring that wages continue to rise like they do in schools uh, for our workers here in childcare centers in Ontario. Now we're also ensuring that this investment will support a critical mass of workers. 75% of ECs in this province will benefit from this plan. And that is a positive step forward when it comes to 
um, increasing access to higher wages for these workers to give them an incentive to stay, to work, and to do what they so obviously love doing, which is nurturing the next generation of our country. And so today we're also announcing a plan to cut red tape. We're announcing a plan to help our workers um, career ladder and vertically grow within their professions. So we're announcing a plan to increase funding so that ECs can get, uh, workers can get EC diplomas as well as a dedicated professional development day of $18.5 million because part of the sector's priority was to understand that they are, um, that the support and mental health of the workers is critical. And so by dedicating a day part of this program to their welfare and to their success, I think is a real testimony to the value we have for them. And so we're going to fund this part of our development of our workforce. And in my capacity as Chair of Canada's Minister of Education Council, I'll be leading, and we are leading, uh, working with uh, Patrice, an interprovincial uh, dialogue with the federal government on removing the foreign credential recognition barriers and the interprovincial mobility barriers that exist within the federation. Because we've got to get more workers to our province uh, and more opportunities for growth. We're also launching an ad campaign that is designed to boost awareness and to build confidence and value of the profession. Um, and we believe this is going to make a tremendous difference. And so, my colleagues, I just want to say in conclusion, when we've increased um, access to childcare, we've reduced fees by 50% for childcare, uh, including here at the Amazing Busy Bee, when we have 92% of operators who put their hand up to say yes to this program, and today we're announcing a plan that builds upon our success, to help us build 86,000 spaces, help us keep reducing fees, help us incentivize more growth in the profession, a $213 million investment uh, to help with these startup grants. I know that all of this together is going to make a difference as we uh, ensure parents in small towns and in big cities get access to childcare, affordable childcare they deserve. So thank you all for this, for your partnership, for your leadership, for the workers who are here, for the operators, the staff, the ECs. We are very grateful for you. We see you. We recognize what you do. It is not easy. Uh, during the pandemic, when so much of the province closed, you stayed open. Uh, and you did it with a great sense of heart. And I'm grateful to every one of you for doing that. So many parents, particularly essential workers, could not have done what they did if not for your work. So thank you. Thank you all. We appreciate it so much. Okay, and now I want to turn it over to N.P. Sidhu, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of International Trade, Export and Economic Development, uh, for words from the federal government. Thanks so much. Well, hello everyone. Bonjour à tous. Uh, thank you, Minister Lecce, for those, those kind words and, of course, for sharing information on how we're working together to help families across Ontario. Uh, I want to thank uh, Subash and Ashma for your hard work. Uh, we know that you opened up right before the pandemic. Uh, you fought through it, and uh, here you are here today supporting families in need in Brampton. Uh, I think it's important to note with our conversations we had, uh, you know, throughout the pandemic, it's uh, the federal government supports with, like, the wage subsidy programs that help you stay open and support the vital workers that work in the hospitals and doctors that needed you at that very time. So kudos to you guys. I'm also joined here by my friends, uh, my federal friends, of course, uh, and colleagues, MP Shafkat Ali, uh, the MP from Brampton Center, MP uh, Sonia Sidhu, the MP from Brampton South, and of course, uh, MP Ruby Sahota, the MP from Brampton North. Uh, thank you guys for joining us, and of course, our provincial counterparts. It has been a busy few years since 2021 when our federal government made transformative investments of over $27 billion. $27 billion over five years to build a Canada-wide early learning and child care system, with more than $10 billion being invested right here in Ontario. We've made some important progress. Since December 2022, Families Ontario have seen an average of 50% reduction in child care fees, resulting in average savings of up to $8,500 per year per child. And as the federal out agreement outlined, we are working together to ensure families have access to licensed child care for an average of $10 a day by March 2026. I've heard from families in my riding and across Brampton of what this means for them. It means thousands of dollars back in the pockets of hardworking families. It means parents no longer have to make the decision to pursue their career or put their kids in expensive childcare programs because we made it affordable for them to make that decision. Of course, childcare was never just about $10 a day regular childcare fees. 
While lower fees and the creation of spaces often gets a lot of attention, we have and will always remain focused on what many argue is the cornerstone and the most critical part of the early learning and childcare system, the ECEs, the Early Childhood Educators. Early childhood educators are highly skilled and dedicated professionals who do incredible work and help children get the best start in life. And without them, there is no early learning and childcare system. Having two daughters in elementary school, I have seen firsthand the work that ECE, registered ECEs do that are passionate with their time to ensure that future leaders are, are sculpted in the right type of way. A qualified early childhood educator workforce needs better wages and initiatives to increase the number of well-paid qualified educators. We have to do more than recruit and train. We need to do more for retaining those already in the sector. And that is why I'm excited to be here today with my provincial colleagues and federal colleagues to jointly announce Ontario's Child Care Workforce Strategy, which sets out a broad range of initiatives to improve both the recruitment and retention of early childhood educators in Ontario. This strategy includes increases to the wage floor, as we heard, for registered early childhood educators, supervisors, and home care visitors, as well as improved credential recognition, support for workforce planning, increased flexibility for employers to quickly hire the qualified staff they need, and finally raising awareness about the value of child care workers. This is really exciting news. A well-supported and qualified early childhood educator workforce is critical to ensure the availability of high-quality child care right here in Ontario. These initiatives all work together to help address existing and projective workforce shortages. The Canada-wide early learning and child care system is about giving children across the country the best possible start to life. A high quality early childhood educator workforce is essential to fostering the social, emotional, physical and cognitive development of young children. I want to thank all of the educators and staff that are joining us here today for this announcement. This system is not possible without your hard work and I want to ensure your work and dedication is valued and amplified. The federal government will continue to work to support you and early childhood educators across the country. When we invest in a high quality early childhood educator, we're investing in the health, well-being and success of generations to come. Thank you so much, Merci, and I now like to turn to MPP Charmaine Williams. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. It is an awesome day for us to be here and hear this announcement and to see the work being done by all levels of government to make this happen. Thank you, Busy Bee Childcare, for hosting us today. And it's great to be back and to see the kids again and play and feel like a child as well. <laughs> and it's a pleasure to join Minister Lecce and also uh, P.A. Barnes, who is a wonderful colleague who's worked so hard on this file to make this happen. So thank you so much. And also my colleagues in the federal government from Brampton, we're a growing city, we love our city, and we all want to make it one of the best places to live, work, and play. Our government knows that access to safe and high quality childcare is vital for Ontario families. High quality childcare plays a key role in supporting a family's economic prosperity and increasing women's participation in the workforce. Children are a blessing. But many women now are choosing not to have kids because of that fear of having that, you know, child may impact their earnings, her career choices, and her access to future leadership positions. Mothers are often see their earnings decline or take time off work for family responsibilities or are given less consideration for management roles. These are the realities that women face. Nobody should have to choose between their children and their career. And that's why it's important to invest in a strong workforce and increase access to safe and reliable, affordable childcare. A strong childcare and early learning sector will help more women achieve financial independence and better enable them to provide for their families and to keep them safe. In fact, the Financial Accountability Officer found that the labor participation rate of mothers with children between the ages of zero to five has increased from 
76.5 percent in 2021 to 79 78.9 percent in 2022. That's a 2.4 percent increase in just one year under the work of our government. That jump made 2022 the highest year on record since 1976. So we are grateful for the expertise of Ontario's childcare workforce, like those from Busy Bee and the many other childcare centres across Brampton and across Ontario for your dedication to safely enriching our, our kids' development and giving parents the peace of mind so that they can work. And it's not lost on me that the majority of childcare workers are women. And we've heard from you, we see you, we appreciate you, and that's why we knew we had to increase the wage floor for ECEs to make the affordability crisis better for women who are working every day in childcare sectors. It's so important. So I'm really proud of today's expansion of the Canada-wide Early Learning Child Care Program it's helping build a stronger Ontario by increasing women's participation in the workforce. And this is a big day for our province because I always say this all the time and I firmly believe it, that when women succeed, Ontario succeeds. And now I will turn it over to my riding partner, MP Shak Pekata Lee, for some words. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Um, hello, everyone. It's great to be here with you all today. And thank you, Busy Bee, for having us. We're accomplishing great things under the Canada, Ontario, Canada-wide Early Learning and Child Care Agreement. Here in Brampton, significant efforts are underway to reach our common goals of increasing access to high quality, affordable, flexible, and inclusive childcare in the province. The Canada wide system of early learning and childcare cannot function without highly trained early childhood educators and assistants. In creating this system with provincial, territorial, and indigen indigenous partners, we all recognize the importance of recruiting, retaining, and recognizing ECEs so they can continue to play their crucial role, a role they are proud of and as they should be. I feel very fortunate to be here as a member of parliament of this beautiful writing, Brampton Center, and to have the opportunity to, to say thank you to all early childhood educators and assistants. Your work is both appreciated and highly valued. The Canada-wide early learning and child care system is about working hand in hand with our provincial, territorial, and indigenous partners. Together, we're well on our way to offer the best possible start to children and families in Brampton and across Canada. Thank you. Now I'll pass it on to um, Shona Belza, a registered early childhood educator uh, in Durham region to deliver a closing remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shona Belsa, a registered early childhood educator currently uh, serving in Durham region. With eight years of experience in the field, I am dedicated to providing exceptional care of the utmost quality. As an early childhood educator, I have always aspired for positive changes within our profession. Our profession consists of devoted and passionate individuals who play a crucial role in guiding and nurturing children while also supporting families through their child's milestone. It is this deep love for what we do that compel me to pursue a career as a registered early childhood educator. Today's announcement 
and recognition fill me with great excitement. The government's introduction of a workforce strategy signals a glimmer of hope for all of us. This signifies their acknowledgement of the importance of our profession and the tireless efforts that our ECEs put in each day. It also signifies a step towards attracting more talented RECEs to Ontario, ultimately ensuring that more families have access to highly quality care for their, their little ones. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to the government for valuing our profession and the dedicated work of RECEs on a daily basis. This progressive move instills optimism with us, fostering a sense of appreciation for our contributions. I eagerly anticipate a future where our profession is even more esteemed and cherished. Thank you and here's to a promising future. Thank you very much. We will now open the floor for questions. Please come up to Mike, state your name and your outlet. Just a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up. Hi, Minister Lecce, Siobhan Morris, CTV. Uh, we know that advocates in this space have been calling for something more in the neighborhood of a minimum wage around $30 an hour. What, you know, what do you say to people who, who are, I am guessing, are going to say that this move to 23 is not nearly enough? Uh, this represents a 19% increase in year one with a commitment to increase wages by dollar per hour, which is commensurate with the agreement we have with QP and our schools for those ECs. This achieves wage parity with our schools. Uh, and I think that's a very positive thing. Part of this announcement is also the recognition that there's investment of nearly $20 million in professional development. There's career laddering, there's red tape production, uh, and there's a promotional campaign so that we have more Shanas on in this community working, more good people motivated for all the right reasons. So this is a positive step forward. I mean, as you can appreciate, we now are gonna be among the top four uh, wages in the country because of this investment. And it's another demonstration by our government that we're committed to the workforce and we're committed to keeping fees low. It's why the, it's, we see this as a way to enable childcare fee reduction by increasing access to the workforce, shoring them up, supporting them as we should. We'll be able to create more spaces in Brampton where they're desperately needed, but frankly, in Durham, in York Region and right across Ontario. So I think everyone will benefit from this investment today. I know your ministry had talked about the possibility of a shortage of some 8,500 ECEs by 2026. Do you have any estimates about how close these measures might get you to filling that gap? We do believe that this comprehensive five-pillar plan uh, is going to help meet the needs uh, and uh, bridge those gaps to help us achieve 86,000 additional spaces by year 2026. Uh, today, we've cut fees by 50%. So a family at this centre is saving anywhere between eight to $10,000 per child per year but we're going to go even further. We're going to reduce fees down to $10 on average by year 2026 and maturity of the agreement. So I just feel like if we can demonstrate to the operator, uh, to the parent, uh, and to the economy and community that we're working together to achieve something that is very good, which is saving families hard-earned money, supporting the good people who love these kids, who deserve a respectable increase, a competitive wage, which we've now delivered, uh, I think is a good outcome. And I'm just very proud to have worked with uh, everyone involved who are here with us today uh, to move the Arctic forward for affordability for parents and uh, for a higher wage for our workers. Grace is graciously letting me have one more. Um, are you, the ad campaign, does it include any outreach to people who've left the profession because wages have been, yeah. uh, they feel too low, or are you hoping by showing that respect that they will be enticed on their own to return? So we're, we're working with the College of Early Childhood Educators to deliver that program. There was some, a successful program initiated in New Brunswick uh, just a few years ago that had a really good impact, uh, where we saw, to your question, some individuals who left the profession returned to it. Now, in part, bolstering the profession is step one, but we've got to give incentives, competitive incentives to then stay in the profession. So today's the recognition that we've got to promote the sector more. Within our high schools, we expanded the dual credits for 400 children. 
uh, high school students rather, that are able to take their college credits to get their credential and certification uh, to become an EC while in high school. So we've also initiated a $5 million innovation fund, which essentially says to local communities, recognizing not all communities are the same, in the northwest of Ontario and Kenora, they may, want, they may want to bring forth a proposal, a business plan to the ministry to leverage local Indigenous workforce. In the GTA, it will be a different reality, but the point is we've created a fund to enable local communities to step up with, with uh, plans to ultimately retain and recruit these workers. Today's a demonstration of our commitment to the people who make childcare possible, which are ECs, with a nearly, with a literally a nearly 20% increase in fees in year one, uh, and a continued increase to maintain the purchasing power of that salary well over the course of this agreement. Hi there, Lorenda Redekop with CBC News. Um, the advocates who Siobhan mentioned, they were also calling for increases for non-registered ECE staff, uh, calling for a minimum $25 an hour. I right. didn't hear anything about their salaries. So uh, it's a, an important question. So I think the, the first principle is that we are part of this agreement is creating career laddering opportunities for the non-ECEs to actually become ECEs. And we're actually paying the costs associated with that credential upgrade. Many of them want to move up. They want vertical growth in the economy. They want to achieve in this country. We want the same. I mean, many of us have immigrant experiences, sons of or daughters of immigrants or immigrants ourselves, and we want that dream to be realized. And so we're actually creating vertical growth opportunities and incentivizing them, those that are not ECs, to become a uh, registered EC. Um, uh, that's important. The second element is for the, as you know, this program of the federal government is for children zero to five. It's a licensed child care within zero to five. The province unilaterally, for the kids in child care for six to 12, that of course were not part of the federal agreement, we stepped up with a $300 million investment to increase wages for those workers so we didn't create a, uh, you know, um, uh, disincentive to stay in one space and to enter into the zero to five. So we have taken a variety of steps to really help uh, the workforce and support them. But as you know, the national challenge uh, that every province is seized with is a lack of ECEs. And so the problem we're solving is that so many of our staff were saying, look, I can go to the local school and make 20 plus percent more thus removing the incentives for these good operators, often very small businesses, they only operate on, on average one to two centers per small uh, business, that they couldn't retain these people. So we've now given them, we've removed the disincentive, we're gonna help ensure they're here, and of course there's a variety of other supports that we've announced today that I think are also gonna retain the workforce and get it, uh, get the workforce in place so we could achieve the 86,000 space target. Okay, so just to clarify, if they remain as non-ECEs, there will be no change to their salary? Today's announcement is specific to uh, ECEs as per the uh, priority or, um, uh, advocacy by many uh, educators and many people in the education sector and childcare sector. Like This is our number one challenge. Now, I will tell you, to help support the ECE shortage for zero to five, we're also part of this announcement taking action for children for childcare 6 to 12 by allowing in those centers um, uh, other workers, like for example, a child and youth worker to be a, um, a now registered um, worker within those spaces, which allows the ECs to move to the zero to five because the research is clear, children under seven have the best impact with an ECE. And as you know, we already allow non-ECEs to work within our six to 12 settings. We, they just have to be approved. This allows them to automatically can carry on their work so long as they have a, a credential related to youth knowledge so, and development of the child. So this is a, a positive way to shore up it all. Gotcha. And um, for parents who may be having a baby, they may have a newborn, right. I'm sure they're wondering, you know, can I get a $10 a day childcare space? So what, what can you tell them, you know? How many spaces will you have perhaps by next year and then sure. moving on? We're gonna, ha we're gonna be creating 86,000 spaces by year 2026 as per the agreement. We are on track to deliver that. We're also on track for families who are either, uh, if, if, uh, if the parent, if moms are pregnant today or maybe in the future, know that the fees are gonna keep coming down. We are on track to deliver $10 a day on average by year 2026. We're on track with respect to space creation. So uh, I'm very proud of the work the province has undertaken, uh, working with all levels of government, including municipal governments, to do that. Um, and I think that's a really positive message to these parents, to give them a sense of hope. You know, in this community of Brampton, it was often referred to as a child care desert. Literally, one of the worst ratios of child to youth in the country. And so this investment helps families here in the communities most afflicted by a lack of childcare spaces. And I want those parents to have hope 
that the governments of all levels are working together to keep reducing fees, increasing access, and supporting the people that um, that educate our kids. So I think together this is a good announcement for Ontario. Can I have some? Please, yeah. please, sir. And, and so Minister Lech is right. We're working collectively with our provincial counterparts, as Minister Suds will tell you. Uh, the Prime Minister is well aware of uh, the, the ECE shortages across the country, and uh, it's uh, announcements like this that will help uh, fulfill that gap in, in shortages. Um, as Minister Lech said, we're and here in Ontario, I think we're at roughly 475,000 spaces, and uh, you know we're going to try to get it over 80,000 uh, by, by year 2026. And so uh, that's our initiative to continue to help families on the ground, not only here in Brampton, across the GTA and across Canada. So thank you so much. Today's press conference. Thank you so much for joining us here today.